Welcome back. In the northeastern part of the country, a block of the Christian Association of Nigeria have donated relief material, including food and clothing, to residents of Kudumun community in Adamawa. It's coming months after a deadly attack from armed Fulani herdsmen. While expressing their gratitude for the material, some leaders of the community also appealed for assistance from the state government. A deadly attack carried out by suspected Fulani herdsmen three months ago has left the Kodomon community in Demsa local government area of Adamawa state almost in ruins and the residents reeling under the effects. Schools, people's homes and even health infrastructure bear the scars of the devastating raid. However, help is on the way to the remote community and it arrives in the form of a team from the Christian Association of Nigeria. Okay. Residents, including women widowed and children orphaned by the attackers, gather in the village square to receive their benefactors. The leader of the team, Reverend Philip Shehu, says they are in Kodomun to identify with them in their time of need. Some of you and those who run from Madagali down to Mubi and uh, Gombe, some of them are with us in our houses, in our churches. We have them. So we just took a little out of it and give them small, small, and decide to carry the one that had made for you here. We know it will not go around all. Just as I've said, we have come to identify with you that what has happened to you happened to us. If you are suffering, we are also suffering. If you are enjoying, we are also enjoying. The relief materials donated include food items and clothing, which the community leader receives on behalf of his people. To you, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You see, some of us now no student here because the clothes have been burned down. Some of the residents also describe the hardship the herdsman's invasion has visited on them. Now we are trying to register for a mock exam. No money. The flying have grazed our farms. We don't have any single thing now. We depend on God. As I'm seeing me here now, you look at what I'm wearing. It's only what I have. We look at the people here. See, we are now, if the government have come here, and promise, and upon that, the flying people are not leaving us. They're still grazing our farms. As a way of forestalling such attacks in future, a member of the CAN delegation appeals to security agencies to be proactive in attending security reports. Any security report given to the government, they should be very sensitive to it. The government will not wait until destruction has been made, and then they will come. Any, any security report is very important to the government to take a step to prevent the happening. That is very important and that is what I, I saw in the issue of government, negligence to security report. In the meantime, an administrative panel of inquiry has recently been set up by the Adamawa state government to investigate the reason behind the attacks. Finally, did you know that Africa faces massive hunger and unrest as it doubles in population by 2050 if agriculture is not mechanized and well-funded? That's according to experts in global cassava integration across Africa. They're at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, I double, that is double ITA, in Ibadan, to find ways of reducing poverty through agriculture and also raising the bar in the nourishment of the continent exploring the possibilities of fighting poverty through cassava with the theme integrated system for an effective cassava production in Africa. They argue that weed control, access to funds and improved variety are alarmingly limited, especially among smallholder farmers who constitute over 80% of the farming population in Nigeria and Africa. Here at the Conference Center of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA Ibadan, are major players in agriculture from across the African continent. Uh, they are worried that low yield, 
absence of mechanization as a result of poor funding have hampered productivity in the agriculture sector. Some of these experts believe if yield remains as low as currently obtainable, Africa faces very hard times ahead as population is projected to double by 2050. There is already a food issue on this continent, so you can imagine that if we double the population, I mean the food issue could worsen to the point where it could uh, you know, lead to instability and, and more. So it's very important for Africa, but it's very important for the world that we manage to feed this exploding population. For some of the participants here, small farmers must be encouraged to form clusters and embrace mechanization. We care about the disadvantaged, especially the smallholder farmers, because un unless you lift those out of poverty, there may not be real development. Going beyond crop yield, the Deputy Director General of IITA also submits that cassava must become an industrial crop with full nutrient potentials harnessed. A crop that is grown on massive scale with very high yields so that we can have massive amount of gari production. Not this small, small in the village, but massive gari production so that we can have uh, plenty of food. And then when we have even more tubers, then we start making uh, starch. We start uh, making other products from gari so that we feed the industries in Nigeria to be highly profitable. The awareness for these victim fortified food crops seems low in Nigeria. Market women and food vendors can only process food crops made available to them. In the light of this, governments at all levels and other stakeholders must step up efforts to create awareness and improve access for farmers. And that's where we leave it for this edition of News Across Nigeria, where we tell you and we report on what's happening across the country. Thank you so much for watching from all of us here. I'm Illumide McCauley. See you tomorrow.